So let's talk about when you first began. There you were, you played Blot, mostly villains. Yes. And here you are, <coughs> likeable, um, charming, fastidious, but a little bit irascible. How'd you get it? Well, I, I, I know the backstory now, but then I was approached by the producer, Brian Eastman, and I was asked uh, if I had read a lot of, uh, or any of Agatha Christie, and I, to my shame, I said no. And um, he said, have you heard of a character called Hercule Poirot? And I said, oh, yes, I've, I, yeah, I've seen him on the, on the screen, you know, Peter Hughes, North Albert Finney. And he said, well, we're really seriously considering making a series. Um, would you like to do it? And we, you, you are our first choice. And gradually, one thing led to another, and I got the books, and I started reading, and I, I rang my brother, John, who I, I know is here tonight, um, uh, because he's always wise, my older brother. <laughs> and I said, um, do you know Agatha Christie? He said, yes, of course I know Agatha Christie. Do you know Hercule Poirot? Yes, of course I know Hercule Poirot. Well, should I? I've just been offered the possibility of playing it, and I just wondered what you would think. And he said, what? I said, well, I just wondered what you might think of it. He said, oh, God, don't touch it with a barge pole. <laughs> the moral of that story, never listen to your older brother. <laughs> Uh, but uh, and that's how that's how it began. That's that was the beginning, really. But I remember you arrived. We first met, and you were carrying Agatha Christie Poirot's stories, and you were making notes about the character. Well, uh, you see, what happened was that when I started reading the books, I mean, look, let, let's say you get a famous character. You're you're a character actor. You get a famous character from literature. <laughs> And the, or a very famous character in the theater, like Iago or any of those, Shylock or whatever. And you think, how am I going to play him? And so that was my first question, really, having seen and well, the legend Hercule Poirot on screen. And now I was coming to him in the books. And the most extraordinary thing happened, that when I was reading the books, I hadn't seen what I was reading on the screen. Now, my, the, the raison d'etre of why I became an actor was ultimately because I believed if an actor gives a playwright or a writer a voice. Um, it's not the same as writing a novel. Uh, a dramatist, a playwright, Nick Deere, who is here tonight, wrote this fantastic script. Um, I'm sure we'll know that without an actor, if you write a drama, there is no drama. And so you become their voice for that particular character. And if you're playing a character like Hercule Poirot, then and reading a character that I'd not seen portrayed before um, gave me uh, the reason to do what I did with him because all I had to do was read the novels, make meticulous notes, which I, which I thought it was necessary to do because the one thing I decided to do was to be true to Agatha Christie. I didn't really care about anything else. I wanted to make it right for her, in exactly the same way and no differently that I wanted to get it right for Tom Sharp when I played Blot in Blot on the Landscape. The same thing happened. And that gives me enormous pleasure and uh, it gives me the reason, a serious reason, why I do what I do. And there, all the notes, um, I don't know how many there are, there's 96, 96 little one-liners that I used to carry around with me. Well, I still carry around in this, in this episode here, the same set of notes, just in case I miss something. Um, that I discovered when reading the novel, like how many lumps did he take in his tea and how many lumps did he take in his coffee, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and his little mannerisms. So I just wanted to get it right for her, and that was, that was important. So but that's you, how it began. But you also wanted to get it right for her daughter. Well, yes, because, um, well, I was invited, Rosalind Hicks and Anthony Hicks, wonderful, wonderful dear people who I became so fond of, um, it took me out to lunch, and it's, a <laughs> rather, it's become a sort of famous story within the family. Of Matthew and I often talk about it, but um, I thought I was going to be taken out for a lovely celebratory meal uh, to say, you know, good luck and everything's going to be fine, and it wasn't, actually. I, I ended up being the grill. <laughs> and and um, I remember very, very vividly um, both Rosalind and Antony looking at me and saying, uh, now look here. We do not want anybody to laugh at Poirot. 
we will smile with him. And I thought, right, okay, I've got the message. And that was why, one of the reasons that, yes, in the, very much in the early, earlier series, where there is more, there's a lighter touch in, the, in the, the short stories as well, it was a little bit more, I would say, uh, amusant without being comic. And I hope and I pray that I never crossed that line, that I knew not only Rosalind, um, who was a sort of uh, representative of her mother at the time, but I knew that it's got to be right for her, the family, living now, and therefore it's got to be right for Agatha. Because I know she never enjoyed watching her characters being portrayed. That was famous. I mean, I knew that. Um, but I, yeah, I wanted to get it. But she also, at one point, called him detestable and irritating and tiresome. And you never set out to make him likable. No, well, there's no, po there's no point in making that sort of eccentric character deliberately likable. I think, I think uh, a lot of writers get sick of their characters, and uh, Dame Agatha got uh, sick and tired of, of Poirot. Quite logically, I got sick and tired of him at times as well. He's, he is an irritating little man. <laughs> and um, he creeps up on you, and he does these silly little things, and he's, he's so pernickety and fussy and OCD and all the rest of it, and I think to myself, go, let go. Just stop it. And then I realise I'm doing it. <laughs> but, 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 David, people do love him. They absolutely adore him. Uh, around the world, all sorts of people. You've been around the world and people have come up to you and said, oh, Poirot, it's wonderful to see you. What about that nice lady you, you met in Hastings? Oh, that was, oh gosh. That was, a, that was one of the most extraordinary things. Uh, fairly early on. I, well, no, not, not too early. About after eight years. Um, I'm, I'm in Hastings and, and we're, we're filming and I'm very, very tired at the, towards the end of the day and I, ju I just need to get away from the set and I, I move away from the set and we're out on location and I go into a little road and just lean on my cane <sighs> like that and there's a little old lady wheeling a, a, her shopping trolley and she looks at me and I look at her and she looks at me again and she says, Oh, hello, Mr. Poirot. <laughs> What do I do? I mean, what do I do? I mean, I'm wrestling off the set as me, and I suddenly realize I've got the mustache, I've got the padding, I've got the hat. I can't say, hello, love, are you all right? I can't, I, can't, I, I just can't do it. Well, no, what do I say? So I think to myself, well, I can... Hello, madam. <laughs> and she says, oh, well, hello. She said, what are you doing here? <laughs> She said, there hasn't been a murder or anything in the East. And I said, <laughs> I said no, 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 madam. No murder in Hastings. No, 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 no. I said, oh, I, <laughs> I am here on vacances. <laughs> she says, Vacances? I am on holiday. Oh, so that's lovely. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. And she walks on, and I think, well, God, it's it. And she suddenly turns around, and she says, oh, just, can I say one thing, Mr. Poirot? I said, oh, we might not continue. She says, thank you so much for choosing Hastings. LAUGHTER <laughs> But, David, to be serious for a moment, one of the things that makes Poirot so fascinating is he's not simply a fastidious little man. He's also got immense moral complexity. Yeah. He's got true characteristics. His Catholicism, his moral conscience, his sense of right and wrong, but also a compassion. And you tried to bring all that. Yes, well, I think that what, what I learned very early on from... from from Dame Agatha was that she had created this outsider. And I've always enjoyed playing outsiders, I, I, I really do. Um, and she made very clear that he was very compassionate and charming with below stairs. You understand what I mean? And, but with, with, with 
all classes, but mainly those who did not have as much as some of the others. In fact, where she allows Poirot to poke fun at the English upper class in rather sometimes a rather pointed way. But always compassionate and encouraging and gentle with, with the people that you would not expect him to be. And she does fill him with compassion. He's a gentle man, as well as being what we know, a gentleman. He is a very gentle man. He's also a very proud man. He's a great egoism. Um, he believes he's the greatest detective in the world, but he doesn't like, he doesn't like to show off, of course. Um, but he, he, he is that, and I think that the, the, the writers um, embraced that when they began to see that in, my, in the performance. And, as, uh, and what also grew with the writers was when they began to see him uh, as a lonely person uh, as well. But the compassion is there, the gentleness in him is there, and so is there, on the other side of the coin, a ruthlessness to bring to justice that which he believes is his raison d'etre, his purpose in life. In one book, he actually says, um, he, uh, he expresses the fact that le bon Dieu, which is the good God, as a Catholic, has put him on earth to rid it of crime where he is able so to do. And um, he's ruthless, ruthless with uh, those who, who commit crime, and they will be brought to justice. But he's also complex, as we've just seen in this film, for example, he allows there to be a, a killing, if you like. But yeah. it's not a justice taken to the Old Bailey. Or no, this is, this is something that I found very, very, very interesting w when studying the character that actually he does take law into his own hands on one or two, several occasions really, and knows what is going to happen at the end, which can be terrifying, can be frightening, can but he allows it to happen. And I don't know whether you've got that moment there where she says, I want to give a few moments with my son. And Poirot picks it up immediately and he goes, I know what you're going to do. And I say, uh, uh, as an elderly gentleman, I give, give you that right. And at the end, he goes, when he knows they've shot themselves, he goes, bon. Uh, he does that. What about the time you were in costume again, in Poole, in Dorset, and the married couple come up to you. <laughs> yeah, well, that was, that, that was, um, this is going to be a difficult one to tell, actually. Um, this is, this is really a story against myself, which is, is, is good fun. It's good to laugh at yourself. And um, I had, I had this wonderful couple come up to me, uh, a man uh, and his wife, and he, he came up and I was once again relaxing off the set and he said, uh, he said, oh, uh, hello. And at this couple, but let me say, this, this, it was a relationship that his wife would always, always go along with, with what her husband says. And you'll, you'll immediately recognize the type if I do it correctly. And he said, oh, hello, hello, hello. And I said, oh, hello, hello, hello. And he said, oh, I just want to tell you, I mean, we, 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 I mean we're so thrilled, aren't we? Yes, we're so thrilled. We really are, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are I mean, it's really a, such a wonderful thing to see you here. And I just want to let you know that we really, really, really watch all your programs and we love them, don't we? Yes, we do. We love them. We love them. Absolutely love them. And um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't miss one. I mean, the, we wouldn't miss one. Would we? No, no, no. We watch every single one. We are absolutely glued, 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 <laughs> glued. And I said, well, that, that is very kind of you. It's um, wonderful to hear this, because I'm still in costume, and I, I can't, you know. And he says, I just, I, I mean, you don't mind if I say just one thing, do you? And I said, no, 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 not at all, don't, don't tell me. He said, I can't understand a bloody word you ever say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go back on the set after that. <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> But the other thing, David, too, is that, that you've survived, not only uh, some actors suffer from typecasting, but you've done so many other things. Television, uh, Maxwell, Melmot, Jaggers in Great Expectations, in the theatre, All My Sons, Long Day's Journey. Was that, was that difficult? Was it important? It, well, it's it, very important. You know, when you get a part like Poirot and you suddenly become a huge hit, you think, ah, could this be the beginning of the end of a career? because that's how you're going to be known all the time. And it was a concern, and uh, Sheila, my wife, and I discussed it quite a long time, and we realized, of course, that 
the one thing in my favor was that he is, I am, uh, in disguise. And that's what I do. I'm a character actor. I've never been a matinee idol or a romantic lead, not tall enough. Uh, and I, I don't have those looks. I've always been a character actor and very, very happy to be so because I really enjoy uh, people, human nature, and becoming other people. I, that's what I like to do. I like to change myself to become somebody else. Um, and fortunately, when I got the role in 19... Well, I was actually cast in 1987. I became an actor in 1969. And various roles I was already known for in, on television with Freud and, and, and Blot and Oppenheimer series and in the theater. Um, I'd already done Shylock, um, Iago uh, in the Royal Shakespeare Theater. So I was already known and accepted as, as one of our character actors, if, if a bit serious, a classical character actor. Um, and what was really fortunate for me was that in between the Poirot series, I was offered roles like George in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and other great roles like All My Sons You Mentioned, Long Day's Journey Into Night, uh, Tom Pen Kempinski's Separation, etc., 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 and other great television roles because the, the business knew what they wanted from me. And therefore, I was able to keep uh, my, if you like, my character work continuing alongside uh, this, this wonderful uh, character of Hercule Poirot at the, at all at the same time. And I think that has allowed me, when offered the role, when it used to come round again, to be able to say yes, because I'd done high profile work in between. And if you like, that's what the business gave me was I may be remembered mostly for this role, but uh, alongside the obit, there'll be a paragraph, hopefully, of other roles as well. <laughs> so yes, that's, that was the great gift that I was given. But looking back now, you know, we're two weeks or so away from the end of the final series, the 13th. Do you miss him? Oh yes, I will miss him. I will miss him, but I'll also see him on ITV3 quite a lot. <laughs> uh, he won't see me, uh, but I'll see him. And I will miss him. He's been, if you like, he's like being a best friend. I, I'll miss not, not inhabiting him or being able to serve serve the, the, the wonderful scripts that I've been given, but I also celebrate it. Uh, it's rather, I, I'm not, I will never allow myself to get too mournful about this, because it, what a thing to have been allowed to do. Yeah? Climb Everest. Do you know a mountain climber who's climbed Everest and gone, oh dear? <laughs> no. I celebrate it. So... If that's the case, how do you explain? I think you once told me that your son-in-law explained what was the quality that really made Poirot so indispensable, so special. Yeah, but it, it, I'm always asked, what, what, it, what is it about Poirot? What is, what is it about this, this character in particular? And I was discussing this at the fa with the family around the table. And my son-in-law, Elliot came up, I think, with a brilliant answer. He said, you know, I think the thing about Poirot is that he is, he's the great moral compass. When you watch him and when you're with him, watching him, you feel everything's all right in the world. You feel okay. You don't feel threatened by him, but you know that whatever he does, finally, will be right. And that's important. And in some way, whether we're men or women, there's an element of Poirot that everybody would like to have. Everything seems all right in the world. He seems okay. 
and he allows you, the audience, I hope, even in the most dramatic moments, to feel with him safe.